Hi, I'm going to talk a little bit about qualitative data analysis software as part of research. And there are several options that people can choose from, uh, you know, 2015, 2016 here. Some of the most popular would be Atlas TI, Deduce, Hyper Research, and Vivo, uh, QDA Miner, and many others. So we're going to look at some of the options here, starting with Atlas TI. It's supported by both PCs and Macs. Uh, it accepts all types of media, and you can actually code on any type of media, so that's very helpful. The cost uh, is kind of in the mid-range for this type of software. As a student, it's a $51 six-month subscription, $99 for two years, um, and after the subscription is up, you would either have to renew or you know stop using it. Uh, the process for getting approved for a student discount is quite lengthy, so be aware that they require two forms of matching ID uh, before you're allowed to purchase the program. Otherwise, as an educator, you can buy it for $670 or so, and that's a permanent purchase of that edition, which when new editions come out, it's a cheaper um, renewal f uh, fee as far as to get a new edition um, downloaded to your computer. If you want to try it, they allow about a two-week trial period for free to give you a sense of what the program is like. This is what it looks like as far as on the screen. It's one of the easier programs to navigate and it's very clean with how they've designed it. Uh, most of the navigating is on the left hand side. Your work area is in the center, and you can look at multiple documents at once, especially if you have a large screen or multiple screens uh, to look at at the same time. And then uh, notes and other types of information can be added on the right-hand side. Deduce is a relatively cheap option. It uses cloud storage, uh, so there are some issues that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but it's qualitative and mixed methods platform. So if you're interested in doing mixed methods, it's a way to uh, utilize both in the research process. Uh, supported by Mac and PC, you can log in anywhere. Very easy to use. Uh, very good for group collaboration. And the cost is $10.95 uh, per month. And you're only charged for the months that you actually log in and use the program. The only issue with this uh, that I've heard about is that it can have a major systems failure. So specifically in 2014, there was a systems failure that was traced back to their cloud storage. And basically, uh, for a few months, everybody who had made an account, all those accounts were deleted, all those new accounts were deleted. And then any data from any user that was stored between uh, March and May was deleted. Um, so that was a major issue, a lot of upset people, not much that the company could do uh, because they couldn't get the information back. Uh, so that was pretty much just a loss for all of those users. Um, and other universities have raised concerns about just the general security of information that's stored through Deduce and that there's no backup available. It's pretty easy to use. This is a screenshot here showing you can use it uh, through multiple different web browsers. And it has lots of color coding options, uh, multiple layers of coding, etc. Uh, many of the features that the other more expensive programs have. Hyper Research is one of the more well-known options, uh, supported by PC and Mac. And they have a setup where you can get the basic program for $200 if you're a student, and it's the permanent purchase of that edition. If you're an educator, not a student, at the time it's $569, again, permanent purchase. Um, but if you want transcription software that helps you slow down audio uh, to actually transcribe video or audio, that's an extra fee. And then it's also an extra fee if you have any unusual media formats that you want to code, like a picture or a video, audio file, etc. It's very similar to Atlas TI, and it looks pretty similar here, but usually you have to have multiple windows open, which can 
um, cause issues for some users. But again, you can look at multiple documents at the same time. Um, you can code uh, in multiple layers. You can group codes together, etc. So pretty useful for um, organizing information. And Vivo is one of the other big ones that people talk about. Again, supported by PC and Mac. All types of media are accepted and uh, can be coded on the program. The cost for students is uh, a little bit more than Atlas TI. 120 for a one-year subscription, 250 for two years, 360s for three. Sorry, 360 for three year. And if you're a non-student, you're looking at you know 500 to uh, 750 for a two-year to three-year subscription. And there's a slight price variation between PC and Mac. Mac is a little bit cheaper. The PC version is a little bit more expensive. And in Vivo, again, has that kind of basic setup where you navigate on the left-hand side, lots of drop-down menu options at the top. And they, for some reason, decided to call their coding uh, applications nodes. So instead of saying codes, you'd say nodes. So not too different, though, from Atlas TI. Um, I've used both Atlas TI and Invivo, and I want to say that Atlas TI was the more user-friendly program, requiring few, fewer cl uh, clicks and keystrokes and um, more logical storage um, and setup of different tools that you could use. Another option is a QDA Miner, and uh, it's supported fully on PCs, and if you want to use a Mac, you have to have Boot Camp 4.0 or Run Parallels Desktop. Um, so just be aware of that. If you're a Mac user, you have to have an extra set of software to make it work. Um, it's qualitative and mixed methods platform. So again, if you're interested in mixed methods, you can um, utilize more quantitative data options with this software. And the really good part about uh, limited access is that Miner Lite is free. There's very limited um, options though. So basically it has to be a regular text file like a Word file or an RTF file. Um, doesn't do anything with PDFs, um, JPEGs, any kind of visual um, audio video files. Uh, but it's free. And it does one level coding. You can't do two layer coding, etc. And it has very limited options for grouping codes and also renaming and changing codes if you do that later on in the research process. But, you know, it's free. Uh, the full program is $5.95 for a full license academic um, and then $2.28 for an annual renewal license. And this is what it looks like. Again, navigation on the left, drop down menus at the top, um, doing most of the work on the uh, center portion of the screen, and then the coding shows up. This is the full example where it shows overlapping of codes and layering. And not only does this type of software make it easier to organize your information and store your information all in one place, and then access that information when you need it, it also has some interesting outputs that can be very useful when you're working on different types of research pro uh, projects. So not all of these that have been shown have all these output outputs, but Atlas TI, Hyper Research, Miner, and NVivo have all the outputs that are going to be shown here. They might call them slightly different things, um, but they're all available. So one of the Great options would be code books where they uh, show you all of the codes that you are currently using in that document or in all of the documents for that research project that you are looking at and marking. Um, it also can show you the color coding schemes or grouping schemes and then any extra comments about those codes uh, puts it all in one spot for you. Uh, there are also frequency of code occurrence options in the different types of software. So uh, trying to pull some quantitative numbers for you as far as how often 
uh, codes occur in d different documents or in the whole project. And then most of them come with the transcribing option, um, although with some of them you have to pay a little bit extra for this feature, but it allows you to slow down, speed up, stop transcribing um, audio when you're trying to put it down in like a Microsoft Word document, um, trying to type it up. And most of them have it set up so that you can run the transcription program from your keyboard so that your hands never have to leave the keyboard, so it helps you speed up the process of transcribing. And then one of the more interesting visual options would be a network view or a code map in some of the other programs, where it actually allows you to visually see how different codes are represented and what documents they appear in, how they tie in with each other, etc. Uh, most of them have a self-generating option so that it gives you a basic, you know, here's what the computer does for you. And then you have the option of editing your map. Um, so if anything's incorrect or you want to change the different types of connections, it lets you do that as well. And it isn't terribly popular yet that I've seen, but some people do use these maps in actual publications and in dissertations um, for the readers. So I'm just going to give you a brief demonstration of Atlas TI here. And Atlas TI, again, I think is one of the easier ones to use. A very nice layout, logical uh, setup. And over on the left-hand side, you have the navigation menu, which lets you switch between multiple documents. And again, any kind of media, so PDFs, Word documents, JPEGs, videos, you can code everything. Even just audio, it'll show you um, points in time that allow you to stop and code um, individual sections and in audio files. And it allows you to color code and group um, different codes, so that's very useful. It also allows you to write comments in various places, so comments on whole documents, comments on individual codes, um, it's very easy to write memos, so if you are interested in adding uh, any kind of memo while you're working on your research and coding, it allows you to make those and tie them into certain documents or certain places uh, in files very easily. And one thing that I really like about this, um, in addition to having easy access to um, your code book, which um, you would just find under codes output, and it throws together a code book very quickly for you so that you can see all the codes you're using and any comments you've made and then you can also color code um, your codes is that um, you can also uh, take over here and start a new code without actually placing it anywhere um, so you don't have to have any area selected to come up with a code um, so this is very helpful for edit coding, where you're starting with terminology or concepts from the literature, and you're looking for those being represented in the transcripts or in the data. So you can come up with those ahead of time. And then also for emic coding, where you're allowing the information to, uh, the codes to develop from the data, um, it's very easy to select an area and then choose what you want to title it, and then it makes it easy to find that information again in the future when you have another piece of information with that same code. So as an example here, go down to where the interviewee is talking, and you just highlight what you're interested in coding, and then you say add coding, and when you start typing in what you want to call it, so for example training, and uh, we'll put this under tools and resources because they're talking about a uh, video that they had to watch. Um, you can just very easily highlight what you want to be referenced by that code and then the code shows up in this right hand margin. And then if you wanted to um, overlap codes you definitely can do that. Um, so if you want to you know, pull in multiple pieces, add a different code,
it overlaps the codes for you in a very easy to read manner. So that's just a little bit about uh, Atlas TI and some of the other options that you have uh, for qualitative data analysis software. Thank you.